Hello everyone. This is Arjun, a senior developer evangelist with Automation Anywhere. And in this session of Bot Store Spotlight, we will discuss about one of the popular packages called JSON Object Manager. This package can assist developers retrieve values from the JSON response of a REST web service call. You can also use it to read JSON config files and can update elements of a JSON object. Let's take a look at how this package is on the bot store listing page. Here is the JSON object manager listing page on the bot store. And once you log into the bot store, you will have an option called get package. Click on this button and it'll give you an option whether you want to add it to the control room or you want to download as a zip file. If you're using an enterprise version of the Automation 360 platform, you can use the option called add to control room. And if you are working on community edition, you can download it as a zip file and then you can import the package into your community edition. Now let's see how we can retrieve values from a JSON object. To test this, I have two simple JSON files. As you can see here, this is a JSON file and we can extract different values from here, such as like first name, last name. This is all about a record of a employee. Let's switch back to Automation 360 and check out how we can use the JSON Object Manager package. I've created a simple bot shell here. And first, to get the response, I'll use the rest get method here. I'll drag and drop it here. And then on the right side, let's configure the parameters. I'll copy this URL from here. I'm going to share this uh, file in the video description so that you can try it out as well. I'll come back here. I'll add the URI. And then since it is just a file which is hosted on the AWS server, I've not set any authentication for this. So we don't need to send any parameters as the body. So now let's save the response into a dictionary variable. I'll click on create variable and give it a variable name called dict response. Click on create and select. Now we will have the entire content in the JSON file to be captured in the dictionary variable. To test this, I will add a message box and see how the data looks like. I'll drag and drop message box here. And we want to call the variable name which we created earlier. I'll click on F2 and select the dictionary variable. And then now we have to define which is the key which contains the entire JSON response. So this is contained in the key called body with a capital B. Please note this is case sensitive. So you have to write capital B in the word body. Then click on yes insert. Now let's run the bot to see how the response looks like. We will give it a few seconds for the bot to download itself into the computer and then it will start executing. We should be able to see the entire JSON response the way we just saw it on the Chrome browser earlier. So yes, now we have received the entire response here. Next, let's start retrieving individual elements. To start with, let's extract the word James and the corresponding key is first name. So I'll just copy this first name. I'll click on close. Now let's use the JSON object manager to retrieve the values. Here is the JSON object manager package, which consists of three actions. First one is called initialize. This is where you're setting up a session such that the next action query to retrieve a specific value and the set action to set a specific value can connect to the session established by the initialize action. Let's drag and drop initialize action. On the right side, let's configure the properties. First, we have to enter a properly formatted JSON object. As we know, we have the JSON object stored in the dictionary variable with the key body. Let's add it here. 
I'll click on F2 and select the variable dict response and I'll type in the key as body with a capital B. Click on yes insert. So now we have the JSON object within which we can try to retrieve different values. And then here is an option which returns a string. This is talking about the response to check if this JSON is valid or not. If it's a valid JSON, it'll give you a success. And if it's not a valid JSON, it'll give you a failure. Since I've already tested this and I know this works fine, I'll just uh, save it to prompt assignment. And now we have a session established and the session name, we have defined it as default. Now let's use the query action to extract a specific value. I'll drag and drop the query below the initialize. And then here we can see that the session name is default, which we have already used in the initialize. So we have to use the same name, whatever we have used in initialize so that it can establish the connection and then it can retrieve the values. Now we want to extract a specific value. As we discussed earlier, we want to extract the word James for which the corresponding key is first name. So let me enter the key first name. And then now whatever is the value which this action is going to return, I want to store it into a string variable. I can just use the prompt assignment or I can define a new variable as well. But for now, I'll just use a prompt assignment here. And to display this, we will use a message box. Let me just use the same message box which I had used earlier. I'll drag and drop it to the end. And in the enter the message to display, instead of whatever we had added earlier, let's select prompt assignment so that we can see the value which we are looking for. Now let's run the bot and see if it responds back with the name James. As we can see here, this has given us the value called James. So this is how you query a specific element in the JSON response. Now let's get to the next level. Let me go back to the JSON file here. The other fields like last name, age are very similar. So we will not cover this. And the next one we will discuss is about the phone numbers. As you can see, this phone numbers is actually an JSON array and it contains multiple objects within it. So now let's say we want to extract this first number for which the connected key is mobile. So to extract this value, first we have to refer to phone numbers and then since this is the first object within the array, this will have an index of zero. So I'll copy the phone numbers key here, go back to my bot. And then in the query, I'll replace the first name with phone numbers. And then I'll use square brackets and add the index as zero. And then place a dot. So this is the dot notation we are going to use. And then in the child object, we want to get the value which is corresponding to the key mobile. So I'm going to copy that mobile from here and then come back to my bot and enter it here. So now you can see this is the expression to extract that value which is corresponding to the key mobile. Let's run this bot and check the response. We should be able to see that exact number, which is all ones. As we can see, we have got the required response here. Now let's do one more simple test here. This is the first object within the array. And this is the second object. So now if I want to extract this particular phone number, I will have to use the key home and also change the index to one because it's a zero based index. The mobile was index zero and the home is index one. So let me copy this and then I come back here, change the index from zero to one. And then instead of mobile, I'm just going to paste it as home. Now let's double check the value one here and then click on run. 
Okay, as you can see here, we have got the required response. And now, say for example, you want to get the length of the array. That means you want to see how many objects are there within this four numbers array. In that case, let me show you the expression to extract the length of that array. We will use four numbers dot length and then open and close parenthesis. Now when I run this bot, it should give me a value two as the response. Let's see what the bot comes up with. As you can see here, we have got the response as two. So this is how you can get the length of the array and also query different elements within a JSON response. This was a simple example to showcase how you can extract values from a JSON. Now let's get into a complex use case. Let's take an example of a sentiment analysis response. So this is the response you will get when you pass a text to a API which does the sentiment analysis and then it sends you back the response as a JSON. So now let's see how we can parse this particular JSON and extract values based on our requirements. For example, if I just use this key called documents, then it's going to give me the entire JSON object as the response. Now let's see if you want to extract this value called positive, which is again within an array. So now if we want to extract this positive, we will have to first use the key documents. And then since this is the first index, we will have to use the index zero and then call the key sentiment. To start with, I'll copy the JSON file path here. Go back to my bot. I'll change the URI here from whatever I had added earlier. I'll replace it with what I need now and then I'll go to the query and then I will switch back to the JSON here. Let's use this documents key. I'll place the documents key here. And then since I want to extract the first object within this array, I'm going to use square brackets and then add the index as zero. I'll use a dot symbol and then go back here. And then I want to extract the value corresponding to this sentiment key. I'll copy it here, come back and paste it here. Now, when I run this bot, I should be able to get the response as positive. Let's see what the bot comes up with. Okay, we are getting the correct response. Now let's get a little more deeper and try to extract the value here. For example, we want to extract the value 43 and the corresponding key is length. Let's traverse through the entire JSON object to see how we can get here. First, we have to use documents and then within the array, I'll use the index zero and then I'll use sentences. And then again, this is another array. So I'm going to use the index as zero here and then I will use length. So let's start from here documents, which we already have. So I'll leave that and then I'll copy the sentences here. Go back here. Instead of the sentiment, now I'm going to place the sentences. And again, since this is an array and we are looking at the index zero, I'll add it within the square brackets, place a dot and then get to this key called length. Let's copy it here and I will add it here. Let's run the bot. We should be able to see the value 43. So now we have got the 43 here. Let's do one more test. This was the first object within the documents JSON object array. Now let's look at how we can extract the value 40. And this is the second object within the documents array. So to navigate, I'll use documents. And since this is the 
second object here and since it's all zero based index, I'll use the index as one and then within the sentences, this is in the first object. So I'll retain the index as zero. So let's change the index only for the document key and see how it responds back. I'll come here. I'll just change this value zero to one for documents and I leave the sentences index as the same that is zero. And now when I run this bot, I should be able to get the value 40 as the response. Okay, we got the response 40. Earlier we looked for a specific element in the index zero. Now we have looked at getting the value from index one. So similarly, you can always use a loop to get, if you have a lot of values within the array, you can use the loop action to do that. So this is how you can query different elements within an JSON response. Now let's see how we can update a specific value in the JSON response. For that, I'm going to use this set action and I'll drag and drop it above the query. We just looked at how we can extract the value 40. So I'll use the same expression from here and then go to this set action. I'll paste the expression here. So this is the path to the JSON element which we want to update. So let's update the value which was 40 earlier and then we will add a new value as 50. And the next field is updated JSON element. This is just going to tell us if it was successfully updated and it will give you a specific transaction key or ID, whatever you would like to call it. So I'll just use the same prompt assignment for here. And now I have just updated the value of the key length from 40 to 50. And since we already have the query here, now when I run this bot, I should get the value as 50 instead of 40, which was there earlier. Let's run this bot and see if we are able to get that exact value as 50. Okay, we got the correct uh, message here with the value as 50. So this is how you can set a value and update a specific element in the JSON. To wrap up, this package simplifies interacting with JSON responses and you can continuously query a single JSON object to retrieve different values based on the multiple elements it contains within an array. And you can also modify the JSON elements as we have seen in the demo. And to add up, this is a very important package for the upcoming challenge in the next week. So please do practice this one so that you will have a much better speed and accuracy when you do the upcoming challenge in the next week. Thank you and go be great.